so far we have a theoretically informed model. We've run the model, we've checked the assumptions, we're happy that the assumptions are met, and so now we need to report the results. The information you need to include, either in a table or a text, is the effect size, or how much variance is explained by the predictors, the model coefficients, and this is usually in a table where we include unstandardized coefficients, standard error of these unstandardized coefficients, as well as the standardized coefficient. And then in the table or the text, you must report the F statistic and P value for the whole model, and then the T statistic and P value for the coefficients. Let's look at where we find this information. The test of whether your model is better than a null model saying that there's no relationship is presented here. Our R squared is 0.377 and adjusted R squared, which accounts for the number of predictors, is 0.374. Usually we'll report R squared because it has a very easy interpretation and can be compared across studies. These are your model coefficients. This table is what we would usually include in a manuscript or report. And then I usually talk about these results in the text. So what we do, if we right click, click copy in a blank Excel document, we can paste. We want to match destination formatting because we want to use our own formatting. The first thing we need to do is rename our variables so that they are more transparent for the reader. And obviously, as you saw earlier, you can leave the variable names there and put a note in the table. I'm going to delete unwanted columns. Okay, now we've got a lot of information here. This is our unstandardized estimates. This is the standard error. These must be included at a minimum. Because we're going to include standardized estimates, I'm going to delete the confidence interval of the unstandardized estimate. And what I'm going to do is just move the T and P value to the other end of the table. We will change standardized estimate to beta in Word document. All right, let's format it. Some lines at the bottom and the top, and again at the bottom. And this obviously depends on the style guide of the organization you're writing for, uh, but this is just something I prefer. Right, you then go and paste that into a Word document and you want to keep source formatting. I usually like to say keep source formatting, but in this instance it's moving off the page. So I'm rather going to say use destination style and I'll edit from here. So we want to call this beta. I usually go and copy the symbol of the internet. Uh, because I find it quite difficult to find it in Word. That's beta. This is also sometimes labeled as B. To edit this in Word, you can say no borders, and then like in Excel, you can specify the borders, a bottom border, top border, and a bottom border here. I usually make mine one point less than the rest of the text. Okay, remember to give it a good caption. And it 
it's really great gym. Great. And then I'll just talk about how to interpret these values. If you can remember, we have r squared that equals 0.377. And we've got our f statistic. Let's just go and copy that. We're not going to put this table in our write-up, but just so I can talk about it now. So what I would do when talking about this model is in the text I would say, a linear regression analysis showed that vocabulary and morphological awareness were significant predictors of reading comprehension. And then you would report your F statistic with your degrees of freedom and your p-value. And then afterwards you would report the R squared because that's your effect size. The other way to say it is to say that vocabulary and morphological awareness accounted for 37.7% of the variance in reading comprehension. Uh, so you can look at this as a percentage. I would then direct the reader to table one where they can see the model coefficient details. So the idea is you don't want to have a table and then say everything in the text. You want to be quite choosy in telling the story.